the Google search algorithm is made up of uh, several hundred signals that uh, we try to put together to serve the best results for each user. Just last year, we launched over 500 changes to our algorithm. So by some count, we change our algorithm almost every day, almost twice over. We really analyze each potential change uh, very deeply to try to make sure that it's the right thing for users. The first step in improving Google search is coming up with an idea there are almost always a set of motivating searches. And these searches are not performing as well as we would like. Ranking engineers then come up with a hypothesis about what signal, what data could we integrate into our algorithm. We test all these reasonable ideas through rigorous scientific testing. The first is with raters. Uh, these are external people that have been trained to judge whether one ranking is more relevant and higher quality than another. We show these raters side by side for queries that the engineer's experiment might be affecting. We also confirm these changes with uh, live experiments on real users. And we do this in something that's called a sandbox. We send a very small fraction of actual Google traffic to the sandbox. We compute lots of different metrics. In 2010, we ran over 20,000 different experiments. All the data from the human evaluation and the live experiment are then rolled up by a search analyst. For each project, it's usually one analyst assigned from the moment that we're talking to the engineers, trying to learn about their change. And the impact is quite small, as you see. We then have a launch decision meeting where the leadership of the search team then looks at that data and makes a decision. That Surely we should fix. Ultimately, the goal of the search eval analyst team is, is to provide an informed, data-driven decision and present an unbiased view. Okay, so not to prove the team will understand what's happening. If our scientific testing says this is a good idea for Google users, we will launch it on Google. For many years now, Google has been offering spelling suggestions for queries that contain typos or misspellings. So sometimes you'll type a query and you might see, did you mean, and then an alternate query. If you type a misspelling of your medicine and you don't click on the did you mean, you might be getting results that contain that misspelling, and they tend not to be high quality results. So we thought about a different kind of interface that we call full page replacement. And instead of did you mean, you'll see at the top of your page showing results for. And in the case that we made a mistake, there's another link, search instead for, and it has the query that you typed. We call that link the escape hatch. For every time a user had to click that escape hatch because the spelling algorithm made a mistake, we wanted to make sure that there were 50 other times that they got the right spelling suggestion and they didn't have to click the did you mean. And they were also looking to see in the live traffic data how often were users clicking on that escape hatch to make sure that the user signal that we get from live experiments was lining up with the signal that we get from our radar evaluations. We brought it to launch committee and based on the radar evaluations and the live experiments, it was pretty clear that the engineers had done what they were supposed to do. And so we launched it. When you align Google's interests with users' interests as we have aligned, good things happen. We've put a huge investment into understanding what works for users. Is this change going to help users not only in, in the United States or in English, but all over the world. I think we get excited when we feel like we've hit on an idea that really helps a lot of users. Users keep coming back to Google even though they have a choice of a search engine every time they open a browser. 